Hello again. I'm going to do tutorial number two for LC3. This tutorial is going to go over what I have shown here. Uh, we're going to put values in for x and y, and then we're going to have output values of x minus y, absolute value of x, absolute value of y, and z. And z will be either 1, 2, or 0, depending on whether x minus the absolute value of y, or the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is greater than, less than, or equal to zero. So I went ahead and wrote out the code just to save a little time, and I'm just going to go through the code real quick and describe what's going on. So like I said in the earlier tutorial, these are just loading in to the registries your x and y variables. Our next function is to figure out x minus y. Now, now in LC3, there is no function that takes a number minus a number. So instead, you have to do um, a number, let's say like 5. If you want to know 5 minus 3, this actually is the same thing as saying 5 plus negative 3, which we can easily do and LC3, so that's what we'll be doing with this code below. So first thing is we want the opposite of Y because we want to get the negative number of whatever is in Y. Let me delete this. This was what I was working on earlier. I don't want to confuse anybody. So <clears throat> we're going to put not R1 into R3 which will essentially be the 2's complement of whatever is in Y. In the next, we're going to add our 3 plus 1 because we actually want the 1's complement so that we can minus. And the only reason that we are putting this into R3, we could be working again with R1, is that we don't want to lose the value in R1. So we're kind of temporarily putting it into R3 so that we can work with R3 without messing up the value in R1 because we will be going on and doing some things with Y. So now that we have our Y in a negative value, we can now add our X and our negative Y value and we're going to store that in the registry R3. And now we're going to store that variable, that amount as a variable XY. So that is how you do subtraction for anything in LC3. Anytime you have a subtraction problem, you will not it, add it, add it, and then maybe store it if that's what you want to do with it. So next we want to figure out the absolute values. Now, in the op absolute value, we're going to be dealing with something called bridging because you don't want to change every number. Uh, let's say if you have 5, well the absolute value of 5 is 5, but let's say if you have a negative 5, then of course it would be 5 too. But we won't be changing the 5, it'll still be 5. We'll only be changing the negative 5, so we're going to have branches. Branches are, in LC3, kind of what you would think as an, an if-then statement. If this, then do this. And this is how they work. So in this code right here, again, where this whole function is just temporary storing our x value into R2 because we don't want to mess up our x value. And so we're adding two together. We want what's in R0 to stay the same, so we're just going to add a 0. We're going to save that in R2. Our next step is the branch. Now if you see right here, you see BRZP. All the branches start out with BR, and there's a lot of different things you can do with the branch. You can see if it's zero, negative, positive, or you can see combine the, uh, the branch conditions. So in this one, we're combining two, zero and positive. We're saying if the number, and this deals with the number you just used, the registry you just used, if that number is zero, which is the Z part, or P positive, jump to ABSX, which is right here. 
So now that we've subtracted absolute x and absolute y, we need to check what z will be. And we have a branch statement. It says check r5, which is the value, and see if it's 0 or positive. If it is, jump to next. So let's jump to next. Now it's saying check again, and if it's 0, then jump to set z, which is here. And set z just takes whatever is in r5 and set z to equal r5. So if it was a zero to begin with, it says, hey, are you a zero? If you are, jump to next. Hey, if you're a zero, go ahead and set z to zero because in what we're doing, we say if the absolute value of x minus y equals zero, then z equals zero. So let's say that it wasn't a zero, but it was a positive number. Let's say five. So let's say, well, 5 is not 0, but it is positive, so it jumps to next. And it goes, well, are you 0? Well, 5 is not 0, so it says, well, go ahead and make yourself a 0. It says, whatever you are, I'm going to end you with 0, which will give you 0. And then I'm going to take that 0, and I want to add 1, because in what we're doing, again, if x is, or if the value is greater than, than 0, then we want z to equal 1. So we're going to just add 1 to it. And then it goes and says, hey, are you positive? Well, now it's 1, and it is positive. And so it goes down to set, and it says, well, set whatever you are, which is 1, to z. So z now equals 1. Now let's go back up and say we are negative 5. Let's go back to the branch and says, are you zero or positive? No, I'm negative. Well, then in that case, let's make you zero and add two. Because it, in our case, if it's less than zero, we want y, or I'm sorry, we want z to equal two. So the next one says, hey, are you positive? Just check again. It says, yes, I'm positive, I'm two. It goes down and says, okay, good. Let's set z to equal two. And now we're going to halt, which just means stop running, stop the program. We're good to go. And then in our next few lines, we're outputting our numbers into the, the memory locations. And I'll show you, uh, I'll get the simulator out in a second and show you what this is doing. So what we're saying is whatever x is now, we want to fill location x3120 with x. Same thing with y um, and all the other functions we did. We're just telling it where to output that information at. So let me open this up. Actually, let me assemble this. Hope I pass everything, which as you can see right here, I did. Oops. Let's see if I can scroll this up. right there as you can see everything passed no errors so you can use this right here to jump to uh, the location you want so I had some numbers written down here to test our code so at memory location 3120 which is our X we're gonna put in a value here we're gonna say set value oops I'm in the wrong one 3120 I've already set it you can go set value. I've already done it. You can actually just put a decimal number in here. Hit OK, and it will convert it to hexadecimal for your binary, whichever one you want to look at. So we're going to say x equals 9, and we're going to say y equals negative 13. So that would mean that at 3122, because that's what we set our fill for x minus y at 3122. So 3122 should be 22, and it is 22. If you want to count the binary here, it's binaries right here, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And this is the hex, uh, hexadecimal number. Let's see, 31, 20, 
3124 is supposed to be 13, and we have that, and 3125 is 2. So that's it. That's how you do um, subtraction and absolute value and a little bit about branches. I hope this help, helps you guys, and uh, have a great day.